Hello friends, welcome back to this wonderful domain of product and brand management. We are getting acquainted with so many things which are uh, useful for developing an understanding about product and product management and brand management in due course of time. Right now our focus is product management and we are progressing from concept or, or should I say philosophy to terms to concept which you know concepts around product management which we would be covering uh, in an uh, you know subsequent one or two sessions. So, carrying forward from the discussion we were having last time wherein we were talking about product development and we focused upon three perspectives around product development and uh, you know at the end I left you with a thought that you know have you heard someone saying what is your problem. So, so that is the perspective which uh, we were focusing upon. Now, you see uh, product actually has an intense association with problem solution, but the point is that are we able to conceive a problem and you see that is where the philosophical perspective connotation is required that is why these kind of terms are required that is why you know categorization is required that is why the understanding of line family classes and these kind of things are required because you see uh, when we understand our core need we wish to understand you know how that need would be satisfied on one one side but that core need may be associated with a prob identified problem we can we can look at that that way i would not go into much details of defining problem in front of you but as you are aware we can look at a problem with different perspectives problem can be looked with with reference to being a barrier with an obstacle something which hinders our way to achieve our objectives to reach our goal whichever way you know there are several ways you, you can look at problems with reference to uh, you know several functionalities also. But uh, when we talk of product it actually helps us in satisfying a particular kind of a need and that kind of a perspective is carried around problem identification. On the lighter side when you say that what is your problem you know so uh, here the identification of problem is emphasized in this statement you see. So, there, there can be uh, you know several elements to it, but, but let us not digress that much let us just look at the uh, at a product wherein you know we must uh, conceive that successful product development and problem solving can be seen in coherence with each other actually. So, we will see uh, you know when we will talk about new product development and new product development process uh, in later parts of uh, our discussion. But uh, here just conceive and keep in mind that you see uh, an identified problem can be resolved through a product and uh, as simple as that you know you look at some uh, application associated with uh, you know uh, let us say reaching out to market for example, you know uh, an, an application wherein you can reach to a portal of uh, uh, you know an organization uh, selling several kinds of products. So, so uh, a problem of not being able to physically reach to the retailer to purchase a product can be resolved through that particular kind of an application and so on. So, so we all understand you know and, and that particular application is a product actually. There are several portals and apps today which are actually bringing in medicines at your doorsteps. Now that that has made life so easy. You see, at, at a particular uh, at a particular hour when you require medicine and you can't go out, it's raining or it's, uh, it's uh, too cold, it's night time, and uh, you are somewhere in the emergency in the hospital. You are attending a patient, you can't leave the patient, and so on. So there are several kinds of situations which are associated with this. And on the other side. Somato, Swiggy, all these are solving several kinds of problems, you know. So, so th th that is a sweeter way of solving problems basically. I am hungry, I order something and so on. Now, let us look at another facet of uh, you know 
product and the related terminology that is associated with product commercialization, which is a stage you know which is usually the last part of you know uh, in, in a development cycle of a new product and we will be talking about that at length because that is the mainstay. Once you have everything in place, commercialization is the mainstay, commercialization is wherein you know it will be uh, accepted as a product uh, against which there would be a price to be paid by the customer and so on. So, so commercialization perspective you know and commonly it is thought to be all the activities involved in introducing the product into the marketplace. Activities that are involved with commercialization include manufacturing and distribution as well as promotion although it is like that, but the fundamental aspect is that has it fetched a transaction that is where you know commercial value of a product comes in and, and uh, all the products are known by their commercial value and when we will discuss branding you would understand you know that, that how it, it uh, gets differentiated with reference to a brand being a brand and, and that, that adds lots of value to uh, that kind of a discussion when we look into the commercial value of a particular product is higher than a similar product and that is uh, where brand contribution comes in. We will be talking about that extensively it is just you know uh, these are glimpses of what is coming in store. Uh, we have lots of narratives, lots of stories, lots of examples for you in subsequent discussions and so on. So, so just bear with me for a while wherein we keep on building upon this uh, you know uh, terminal uh, these terminologies and then, then some classification and then it would be a beautiful story part of this subject which you would uh, you know get entertained by. So, and then, then you would not actually get confused on when terms would be repeatedly used. So, that is the perspective which we are trying to build up here. Then there is product launch. It involves introduction of a new product to market usually accompanied by advertising and other marketing communications. It is a part of commercialization as such. You see launches are vast many a times they have a sequence of events associated with them. For example, a car is to be unveiled, you know a new automotive is to be launched for example, a new model is to be launched and that launch is associated with so many things you know when, when you plan an advertisement about it, you plan an event about it, you plan to put it uh, you know somewhere in auto show and, and uh, you want to bring in some celebrity on board on associated with that launch and, and so many things are associated with that. A simple you know uh, for example, uh, 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 a product which is not so price sensitive you know a, a particular kind of a model of a pen is to be launched similar kinds of exercises, but slightly on a lower scale are, uh, are to be done. Movie launches you know they are actually you know vast as far as their character goes. And, and if you will go into the stories of how uh, you know Dark Knight came in, how you know Spider-Man came in and how uh, Bahubali came in you know you would realize that what kind of uh, perspective movie launches carry along with them and how important it is if you will look at them as products and, and uh, uh, you would not uh, disagree with me when you say that Bahubali kind of movies they, you know they, they have done exceptionally well. So, then comes in product adaptation. You know it is altering the product to meet local conditions or preferences. When a particular product say a burger, it actually you know looks into the local taste and adapts to that wherein customer expects that kind of a taste in his burger actually. So, that is where in multinational chains they are coming which, which uh, you know uh, which have come to India and are continuously coming in further also. They are actually continuously studying consumer behavior which is related to the local perspective that is you know uh, uh, localized choices. So, their adaptation comes in and this adaptation many a times is related to change in production processes, procurement of raw material also. You see its adaptation is not simple actually. When you say that you are bringing a particular kind of a change in a particular kind of a product which, which is you know related to uh, local market conditions. For example, if I am talking of an automotive local driving conditions, 
if I am talking of uh, you know food product, local you know taste and those kind of things. So, uh, that simple kind of a thing may actually alter so many things in whole of the value chain, wherein you see that particular kind of a uh, raw material has to be uh, procured for some uh, from somewhere. So, that is ag again uh, another kind of a process, then processes might uh, you know you might have to develop some processes. For example, a furniture company coming to India, they might find that there are rules and regulations which are uh, you know uh, associated with uh, sustainability which are very strong in India and then we should be happy about it. So, but then they have to adapt themselves wherein they would not find the wood readily available for processing and converting that into furniture. So, either they have to look into for some other material or they have to look into you know some processing wherein they can go within the permissible limits, but the context, the, the essence, the style, the design does not get hampered. But you see all this these changes are uh, actually uh, indicating towards so many changes at the back end, technological adaptation, uh, you know uh, procurement adaptation, processing adaptation and so on. So, it might be very simple thing to say that product has adapted or uh, organization has uh, you know customized the product according to the local needs, but, but uh, that is believe me uh, an, a change in its entirety actually. So, so as I was saying you know uh, some of the factors that contribute to the need for product adaptation include cultural factors, climate, customer preferences customer purchasing power, tax laws, restrictions, quality standards, safety standards and so on. And, and as I was referring to you know uh, automotive models, so, so for example, across the world car models are uh, modified, altered based on country they are sold in and in countries like USA, France, Germany etcetera some vehicles are left hand drive whereas right hand uh, you know drive. Uh, uh, drive cars are available in India, UK, Australia etcetera, hence the same car brand and model is adapted as per the laws and regulations and you know those. So, this is a simple example, but believe me changing uh, driving from this side to that side requires some effort. And then food products you know as I was talking about you know burgers, so McDonald's aloo tikki burger is uh, a very prominent example on that and then make spicy paneer with Indian spices and so on and, and several other products we, we, we are aware of that. And sometimes we do wonder why uh, you know uh, how that organization could understand us so well that they actually produce something which is specifically related to our choices. Now, that is the wonderful thing and that is what product management is. So, when we talk of MVP you know is it is a version of a product with just enough features to be usable by early customers, early adapters who can then provide feedback as quickly as possible which they can use to iterate and improve for future product development. You know for example, you have prepared uh, a donut and, and uh, the, the early consumers they give you a perspective around that this is how this can be developed further. It happens many a times in case of tea and you know uh, other beverages and so on. And then minimum marketable product is a product that has the simplest features yet is made more presentable to be launched in the market. It offers all the benefits that an MVP offers. So, you see in, in product terminology you would find it common you know when they say MVP and MMP and so on. So, and, and uh, that would be reflected other uh, at, at other levels as well. And this uh, I have adopted from uh, you know Rees. Uh, and, and uh, the reference is given in detail. Then there is another important element uh, related to recalling the product. Now, this you have heard many a times and, and you see uh, there, there is a reference to 10 biggest product recalls of all time uh, you know the, the reference is given uh, wherein you know Berkeley Global Products Recall uh, March 26, 2018 uh, that, that complete reference is there for you, you can go into that uh, detail and you will find that there are, have been so many instances. And believe me uh, it is not uh, you know uh, that we should be actually focusing upon as a fault finding kind of a thing. 
it is actually a proactive thing from the side of the manufacturer because manufacturer recalls the product because they are continuously wondering upon that if something has gone wrong when they were producing the product. You see they, they try to do their best to, to keep up the quality levels and we have talked about quality uh, earlier as well. But many a times despite of all the strong processes, despite of all the efforts, despite of all the human intelligence and uh, you know uh, software and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we still have a scope that you know uh, that, that uh, fault remains within the product and the recall is uh, a reflection of their consideration that they are not only accepting that something was overlooked, but they bring it back, correct it and then send the back uh, send the product back. So, so product recall is wherein you know it is it is related to the withdrawal and request for return of a product by the manufacturer or distributor in order to remedy or replace it due to the detection of a fault or faults which render it unfit for the purpose of which it was sold. Technically customer feels that, but that is identified many a times by manufacturer accepted by the manufacturer and then the process is taken forward. You see all companies should have a clear policy of how they will deal with product defects whether due to design or faulty materials particularly when the you know incidence of uh, defects is high and so on. But uh, despite of the fact that they you know uh, they do well they, they are still ready for such kind of things which come in. We will talk about this that it hampers the growth of the product in due course of time people uh, they find you know. Uh, product uh, not so trustful in due course of time and then there are several kinds of campaigns and uh, you know trust building exercises which are done by uh, organizations which they are quite successfully doing as well and, and uh, then it uh, actually affects the brand equity as well in due course of time that we will talk about uh, not specifically focusing upon the fault, but we, when we will be referring to the elements which build up a brand. Now then comes in product abandonment and I would like to call it exit actually you know. So, that is that is a different kind of abandonment is when you leave the product you know let it go uh, text uses that, but, but it is my personal and, and there is no uh, you know uh, second thought that I would not accept uh, the terms given by the great authors, but uh, to my personal choice I would like to call it exit wherein you know the, this this product is brought out actually. So, it is a you see product is owned by organizations, product are babies of organization you know you passionately build up products, you nurture the products, you live with the products when, when we will talk about you know uh, how people drive those products you would realize that you know product and brand managers they actually put in so much of energy in doing that. But and then once you uh, once you once you feel th that way and at the end of the day you say that abandonment so that does not suits me. So, so with all due respect I will call it exit you know that it was let go. So, you see uh, many a times uh, many authors have called it uh, called it product deletion, but, but to me again that is not so much uh, you know adaptable kind of a term to me. So, product elimination is also many a times very raw. But, but uh, if you will take my advice call it product exit. Now, it is the discontinuance of a marketed product. You see product exit may occur at any moment from shortly after launch a new product I, and again I would refrain from calling it a, a product failure a failure per se. I would uh, like to give you my view that product failure is not to be uh, you know specifically taken as uh, a failure it is to be seen with lesser acceptance from the side of the customer. And, and uh, you see why there can be so many reasons because we could not assess the customer rightly we could not assess the core need of the customer rightly we could not put in uh, you know uh, a match between the need and the product itself and so on. So, so, ultimately I would not say that uh, you know uh, that the exit came in because the product failed I would say that exit at any stage came in because 
either it has lived up its life, we will see that in product life cycle and detailed discussion subsequently as well or it was not so well accepted despite of all our efforts to understand consumer behavior in future related to our newer product which are which we are intending to launch and so on. So, have this word of caution from my side, if you accept follow you know uh, this, this perspective on saying that it is exit and non acceptance rather than calling it a failure. So, now you see for example, after 37 years of legacy Maruti Suzuki discontinued Maruti 800 from its model line in India in 2014, that was a very thoughtful uh, you know effort. It took a strong long time for them to you know take it away from uh, the customers and to bring in uh, a substitute to that. So, so uh, you see it was a deliberate strategic exercise and that is where I call it exiting the product. So, bringing it towards the end or supporting the product towards the end of its life cycle and bringing a newer substitute and, and uh, we will look at that it may be seen with the perspective of that it was not you know allowed to decline it was actually uh, you know uh, you know exited from a particular position from where the other substitute picked up and it grew and took the whole cycle towards a growth. We will be talking about these kind of things later on. So, just bear with me till then. Now, you see product approach is a method used by sales people to approach prospects in which sales people demonstrate the product features and benefits as they walk up to the prospects and so on. So, so again uh, product manager one of the most important aspects of what we are talking about because these are the people who actually drive all these things. They are at the hub of, they are at the center of the situation. You see if you are a product manager, you are the person who understands everything related to product, who understands all the terms, who understands everything in detail what is going on around. So, product managers are responsible for developing marketing plans, coordinating implementation of the plans by the functional departments and monitoring performance of their assigned products and so on. Product managers are should I say the parent figure to a product, should I say the owners of the product, should I say the drivers, you can look at them as magicians who make things happen in terms of everything which is going on around in terms of a product and product management. Now, the roadmap is a plan put together by the product manager that prioritizes and estimates release dates for the products features and driving it all through as I said product managers are drivers though they have a roadmap. Now, let us look at another beautiful term called product concept. You see we will be uh, looking at concepts related to product later on, but here product concept it is in itself to be seen. So, it proposes that consumers favor products offering the most quality performance or innovative features, but here I should underline that while saying that as per consumers expectations, as per consumers thoughts. So, you see product must match the consumers thought, product must carry the reflection of what consumer expects in the product. See marketers might have a you know a second thought uh, believing a better product will by itself lead people to beat a path to their door and so on you know you, you can you can put it in quotes uh, you can you can uh, look at it with a po poetic and a philosophical perspective. But you see a new or improved product will not necessarily be successful unless it is priced, distributed, advertised and sold properly. It is taken to the consumer with the perspective actually and that is where product planning in association with marketing plan comes in and we will be talking about that in subsequent sessions and you would realize that product management is actually not only about developing a product looking at the aspects associated with the product, but taking it to its culmination wherein it becomes the part of the life of a consumer actually. Now, 
Then comes in another important thing product knowledge. See in marketing knowledge refers to consumers meanings or beliefs about products, brands, stores etc. that are stored in memory. So, so uh, this is a quite an explicit term and, and uh, you know you may think about this in an elaborated manner and try and understand this. Then comes in product innovation and here I would spend you know couple of minutes wherein you see innovation refers to any good service or idea that is perceived by someone as new. However, conventional a product is if it is presented in a newer form again you will look at it with the perspective of innovation. You see even even if you slightly change the shape of the bathing soap for example. So, that also is associated with innovation you can put up uh, you know a sense of logic there that this kind of a change in the shape uh, would uh, you know enable the, the soap uh, uh, you know uh, not to uh, you know dissolve so easily because because the surface does not touches the soap dish always and so on. So, so that kind of a change also is innovation and, and you see that is where is the beauty of product management is product manager continuously keeps on thinking in terms of what else and that is where innovation comes in. The idea may have a long history, but it is an innovation to the person who sees it as new. Innovation take time to spread and then you know there are several aspects to it. Uh, and, and we will keep on referring to that when we will be talking about innovation design thinking and so on. You see and, and we can take an example here uh, an example on uh, of Procter and Gamble uh, which is an active product innovator and you, you see the company employs uh, almost 1000 science PhDs and applies for roughly 3800 patents each year. So, so there is a reference given on that and you see that is where they focus upon uh, you know uh, innovation to be a main element of their product development. You see uh, recent innovations that created entirely new categories include uh, Febris and odor eliminating fabric spray, uh, Dryel a product that helps dry clean clothes at home in dryer and Swiffer a cleaning system that effectively removes dust, dirt and hair from floors and so on. So, so these are several examples on innovation and so on. And uh, I will be talking about two more elements which can be seen as concepts as well as terminology associated with product in my subsequent session those elements are related to product positioning and product life cycle. And subsequent to that I will be coming up with other insights wherein we would be talking about concepts specific concepts related to product till then enjoy whichever way you wish to look at the introductory phase of our discussion just ponder upon it think about it uh, keep sending questions keep associating whatever we are discussing with the examples around you and that is the biggest thing which one must do. I will see you next time till then goodbye.